it is spring of 2021 and I just got my hydroponic greenhouse set up. This is um, a Dutch bucket set up and this is probably my last year I'll be using this particular greenhouse. You can see that uh, it's getting a little weak here and there, but this is probably my fifth year with this greenhouse at least. And uh, it's held up great. It's a uh, shelter logic and I've been very happy with it. I'd buy another one. I'd maybe even get a bigger one next time. Um, seems like it's actually held up better than like the, the carport ones, which is basically the same thing. But anyways, let's talk about the, the system here. So how this works is we have over here a reservoir and the black pipes coming out go to like these little manifolds like this and all the small black tubes go to the top of everything and then they drain back down through these tubes and then all the way back through the white and right back into it. Super simple. I'm using Maxi Grow right now. And when things get bigger, I will be switching to uh, Maxi Bloom. So let's give you a little tour of what's going on in here. So you might remember from a previous video that I grew a bunch of stuff indoors and I was running out of room and I was killing plants and just not doing too good. I started too early. That's a theme of mine. I do that all the time. And right here is a little tomato that's in cocoa core. And I was actually going to toss that guy out. That one's not hydroponic. That's just sitting in here. I was going to toss it out, but it was producing a little tomato. And so I decided to keep it alive. I know it's very, very sad looking, but every day or so I'll just when I remember, so I'll probably end up killing it because I won't remember. I'll just dump a little bit of hydroponic nutrients on it and see what it does. This is a jalapeno. This is the one that I started in soil and it stayed really short. It didn't get very tall, but it got really nice and bushy. And you can see it's loaded with buds. And I think this is gonna be a really nice plant. That amaranth in the back that seed just somehow landed in the pot when I was growing it. And so I left it. And even when I transplanted it, I left it. And so we'll see how that does. Here's a pepper plant. Looks to me like that's probably a jalapeno. Um, one theme on this is that I don't know what any of this stuff is, but I know that I planted stuff that I like and we'll just see what it does as it grows. Um, except for these, this is a zucchini. Um, this stuff was all cramped and they were all grown in these little tiny peat pods. And so it's going to take a little while for everything in here to get acclimated to the system. But we will definitely do an update to show you that. It's another zucchini. Here's another zucchini of the same age. But this one was just doing especially good. You can see it's already trying to blossom and everything. Uh, on a system like this, you don't have to worry about if things seem like they're producing too young. With all the nutrients that are getting fed right to the roots on a cycle throughout the day, the plant is going to be able to keep up. You don't have to worry about like pinching off blossoms and things like that. I decided that all the corn that I started inside, I'm just going to do bucket corn. And when these get too tall, they'll be in here. They'll just go outside. But for now, they're in here just being kind of protected. More peppers, more peppers, more peppers, more peppers. And in the middle, I have tomatoes. Now these are gonna be some of the saddest looking tomatoes you've ever seen. And I need to get um, a little bit more perlite. I just ran out. But, and I also, you probably wouldn't normally put this many tomato plants in one pot, but this system will keep up. It will be able to handle it. They may get a little bit root bound where the drain could plug up a little bit and might take a screwdriver and just kind of shove it through there to, to break it up so that it doesn't overflow. But other than that, they'll do just fine. There's more tomatoes, more really bad looking tomatoes. 
and more tomatoes. So I know these look horrible right now, but trust me, tomatoes are really hard to kill. These will come back and they will do really well. I put these in the middle of the room for a reason. Some of them might get tall. I have determinants and indeterminates mixed in here and I don't, like I said, I don't know which is which. And this gives me all this height and also somewhere where I can drop lines down to support them. So that's why those are like that. Here is that behemoth of a tomato plant that I grew indoors. Sorry, the lighting's not very good. And it, it looks awful, <laughs> but it will come into it. I've already got two tomatoes off this that from when I was growing it inside and it will do just fine. I know it looks awful right now. I, I did a terrible job this year. I already explained that. But. Here's two more tomatoes. Here's another jalapeno. This one was grown in cocoa core, and for whatever reason, it stretched like crazy. It didn't stay nice and bushy like that one. But it also produced jalapenos. So here's a decent sized jalapeno already. There's two more on here. And now that what happened was this outgrew the light. So the light was actually kind of next to it. This was that unit farm light, which I loved. I didn't have any problem with it, but I had it, didn't have enough headroom for where I put these plants. So it was stretching and it was growing all these teeny tiny little leaves. And they're already starting to look better being out here. Uh, where I have this greenhouse is actually mostly shaded, so we'll see how it does. But another pepper, another pepper. So that's the quick tour and the quick um, introduction of Dutch hydroponics. If anybody didn't know, it's really easy, super simple. I have that set on a timer. Uh, it's just a pump down in the bottom of that, that reservoir. And what's great about this is all you really have to do is make sure that the reservoir doesn't run out. Um, other than that, it's automated. And I mean, this could go for a week without me ever thinking about it or looking at it. And it will it'll be just fine. And the only other thing you have to worry about is that if one of these buckets plugs and then it starts overflowing, well, your reservoir is going to empty quicker than it normally would. So it's a good idea to check on it every few days or so, but for the most part, it will do great. Like I said, it looks terrible right now, but trust me, I will update you in a few weeks and we will see how it does from there. Thanks for watching.